There we go. We will be recording this session um, and we'll be posting it on our website, I hope. So that way, if you missed something or if you want to watch it again, you can, you can go back and, uh, and, and you can watch it. Feel free to follow along with the project. Um, I tried to choose something kind of simple uh, for the first one. Um, you can follow along if you want, or you can just watch. Um, totally up to you. Uh, okay, so I'm going to take you through all the, the tools and the materials uh, that you're going to need for this. And I'm going to tilt my camera down here so you can see the, uh, the workspace uh, that we are working with. So this is us, AGH at home. Yay. Um, okay, so the basic principle that we're working here with here is gluing stuff to other stuff. Um, and we're taking inspiration from uh, the Bruegel Bosch bus by Kim Adams. Um, and the stuff that he glued to the other stuff was mostly toys and things like that. And then the other thing was the, uh, the bus. So that's where we kind of have to start is choosing a base, something that, you know, is going to be the bigger thing that we're going to glue. And then the other things that go onto it. Um, so the tools we're using today, you can use either uh, white glue or wood glue. Um, I find the white glue works just fine, uh, which is good. Um, I'm also going to be using these glue sticks with a hot glue gun, uh, which that works just as fine. Sometimes the white glue actually works better. Uh, it holds stronger, but it just takes a lot longer to dry. So I might be using the white glue on certain parts. Uh, we'll see. Um, I always keep a cup with water in it nearby in case I accidentally burn my hand on the glue thing. These are low temperature um, uh, glue guns, so it's not, uh, not, that, not that worried about it, but it's there just in case. Um, so uh, also I have a pair of scissors. Um, and in terms of other materials, I have a whole selection of things here. And I'm going to take you through each of them uh, sort of one by one. And I've organized them according to um, size, shape, uh, color, um, and what type of material they are. So I've used old uh, Tupperwares with no lids. Um, I can't find the lids anymore. And I've organized these items in here. So I have two um, buckets with wood pieces in them. Uh, this one's all sort of random wood pieces, and this one is all, they're all the same. Uh, so I kept those separate. Um, I have some plastics in here, so they're like fridge magnets, these giant colorful buttons. Um, this is, these are also plastic, but they're more like, like, these are from an old shelving unit that I discarded, but for some reason I decided to keep these. So there's just sort of uh, a few odds and ends, but I kept these separate because of the color differences. So that's one thing I did there. And oops, I have some poker chips in here that were given to me. I don't really play poker, but maybe I'll use these for this. Um, also some glass beads. Oh, I have some more plastic things here. So these are going to come in really handy. Um, lids from like yogurt containers. I have lids from other things. Also like a lid from a, a glue stick that dried out. So I kept that. Like um, little tiny lids that were left over from uh, watercolor paint tubes. Um, and over here I have also some metal objects. Um, I used a couple of these like like this here this is a hinge from like a sewing desk i think that i i mean i don't know how to use that again so i'm going to use that for this um, i didn't use any pick out any um like sharp things like screws or nails or anything like that um, and then also you know like these tools from like ikea furniture where you you know you probably have like a dozen of these lying around. Make sure you keep at least one handy in case you need to 
take that couch apart. Um, but yeah, I, I collected all of those. Um, one of the big things that you want to uh, to make sure of is that you're not using something that is still usable for its original intended purpose. Like you don't want to be looting someone's work area and you know for for your art project and you know they go back and oh where's my screwdriver for this like you know you want to make sure that you're you're doing that um for bases today i'm just going to use a flat piece of uh, like a panel a board uh but you're welcome to use uh whatever you like if you want to um you know, if you if you want to use something that's more sculptural and three dimensional, you can definitely do that. Uh, these are the examples that I'll be working off today. Um, so with both of them, I used a canvas board panel. Um, I glued the, the items on and then painted it afterwards, which I'm not going to do in this workshop, um, but I will do maybe a little bit after. And this one you can see. Um, I've used a couple old toys, um, like the wheels from a Hot Wheels truck, um, like a broken arm from a action figure, chess pieces that were discarded. So those are really good uh, to use for this project as well. So I've got a couple different things here. I'm gonna use this cardboard because it looks nice or it shows up nice off the white. Um, the white table. Uh, and to begin, I have this array of things in front of me. Where to begin? Um, I think what I will do, there's a couple ways you can do it, is you can think about what you want to make first if you have an idea. If you don't and you're not sure where to start, I like to do a little bit of shopping. So maybe I will take one thing from each basket or two things from three baskets or something like that. So maybe I'll grab um, these two lids, and I'll grab a handful of these glass lids, and let's use this thing. Looks like it'll be fun. Um, a couple poker chips, and it looks like everything I've, you know, once you've grabbed a couple things, take a look at it and just sort of see what you've grabbed. Everything that I've grabbed so far is, is um, they're all circles. So to offset that, maybe now I want to start grabbing things with straight lines or angles. So maybe these, some of these will work, will work good for that. Um, I've set aside a few other things that I'm going to use as well. I picked them out ahead of time. There are a couple lids and circly things. Um, so now that you have a couple of things here, um, you can start to arrange on your board. I usually start with the bigger things first. Actually, I might grab a larger lid here. I'm going to start with this. Um, nice big, um, these little things, I'm going to maybe put them aside to start. Because I don't want to put all kinds of little things on and then, you know, if I put a big thing on top of that, then I can't see them. I mean, you can do that if you want, but it's your art, right? Um, so I'm going to start with the uh, the bigger the bigger things. Um, you can put them side by side. You can put them inside each other. Uh, that's what I did on this one. I did a big lid and then a smaller lid like that. Actually, maybe I'll put this. Kind of see it there. I don't know if that helps or not. Um, and then maybe I'll put these little circles kind of like that. And then that one there. All right. And then maybe since I since I, I have some circles going, maybe I'll put like a like a triangle thing in there somewhere. So I'm gonna kind of move these things around until I'm happy with uh, a design until I have sort of a design that I'm happy with. So maybe I'll do it like this. Yeah, there we go. And then this little guy. There. It's kind of looking like a little robot face. Uh, once I'm kind of happy with this, I'm not done with 
you know, I'm going to go back and choose more objects and add them in, but this is sort of the base layer. So I'm going to start gluing these things down. Um, so making sure that my glue is ready to go and kind of away from my fingers. That down, just like that. I'm going to take these off for a second. I don't need a lot of glue. I don't need to, you know, go nuts, but you do also want to make sure that it stays. I'm just using little dots of glue. Put that down. Put more in there. And now this part, I'm actually going to make this separately before I attach it on there. And now I'm going to attach it on to here. You got to kind of work a little bit quick when you're working with hot glue because it does dry kind of quickly. Um, however, if you know you miss your opportunity, if you put a little bead of glue on there and then it dries, you can just pick it off really. It's, it's basically like plastic. I can just pick that piece off. And then this one goes right there. All right, so I've got my, my piece started. Um, I haven't really, uh, you know, I didn't really start with a plan ahead of time, but now it's kind of turning into this, it kind of looks like a little bit of a face. Um, which, you know, if you see something and you want to go that direction, great, go for it. Um, but I think for this one, I want to go a little bit different. So I'm going to, Christy sees a solar system. Hey, cool. Yeah, I like that. Right? So everyone can see something a little bit different and, and you can, uh, you can go your own direction, right? It's your, it's your, uh, it's your thing. So I think because I want to go a little bit abstract. Um, maybe now I'm going to add something that'll make it look not like a solar system or a face. That's my challenge uh, for now. So now I'm going to go back through my row of things, or you know, I can start going into what I have here and pick some smaller things. So it's kind of like if you're drawing or painting, you start with the bigger sections first. You start with the background, you know, the big sky the big mountains, whatever. And you do the, the smaller details later at the end. You're not gonna do the small details, you know, right away because, well, then you're gonna cover them up with the rest of the work. So this one here, let's see what I've got. Again, I'm not really thinking about this. I'm just kind of picking out things that I like, that kind of I like the look of. Um, here. There's a couple couple things. See what else we got. Oh, I have some marbles in here. Maybe I'll use some of those. And I also have these. I saved these for some reason. These are just the, the inside roll of um, like dog bags, uh, like poo bags. Um, and then some like drinking straws, I have those here. Uh, something that you can do um, if you like is uh, getting an object and sort of chopping it up. That's what I used scissors for. Um, and what I did earlier is I took a straw and I sort of cut it up into, into sections or into small pieces. And then I glued those down onto this board to sort of designate or cut out some sections like that. Okay, that's how I started this one here. So it almost looks like, um, 
uh, there isn't really much of a story here, but like it, it could be like a three dimensional comic book page. Um, you know, it could be. Um, so that's kind of, you know, what you could do with that one. And then I started gluing things inside each rectangle. Um, okay, so I got these. What else do I? I've got some straws here. Got a few more up. Yeah, this weird thing too. All right, so now, um, let's see, maybe I will put some of these glass, these smaller things. I'm going to start adding. Put one there. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding smaller details, um, but I'm following the uh, I'm following the line of this here as a bit of a guide. So I'm not just sort of putting them on randomly. I'm kind of following uh, to you know to go along with that line. <clears throat> Uh, maybe what I will do is I'll use some of these wood pieces, kind of glue them sort of side by side. I have two different sizes here, so I'm going to alternate them to make a bit of a pattern. Not going to there fits on that side though. So now here what I'm trying to do is add some a little bit of contrast with uh, less less circly bits and more sort of lines. So I'm trying to I'm trying to contrast these circle lines with these straight lines kind of going up and down. So I've got them kind of cutting through. But they're also angled, so they, they kind of match with this a little bit. Um, okay, so what next? I have a little bit of space to fill, um, or to, to work with at least. I don't necessarily have to fill the space. So I have some empty space here and some empty space here. Now, what I might think of doing is filling up that space, or I could just leave it uh, as it is, because this empty blank space and you know here, they kind of balance each other out. So if I have just, if I fill everything up all over the place, it might be a little, um, it might end up being a little visually complicated, which is, again, fine, if that's what you would like to do. Um, but I'm going to maybe add a little bit uh, of something on this triangle here. Uh, maybe I will put a marble. I'll do I'll do two marbles. No, I'll do three. Yeah, let's get crazy. There we go. Three marbles. Now my sculpture is starting to 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 go up. That's right. All the marbles. Uh, and I have put them in. Um, there's a groove in the uh, in the baseboard chunk there, and I sort of set them in there. Um, so, how much time do we have left? Okay, so we're almost out of time, unfortunately. Um, so I'm gonna try and finish this up really quickly. Maybe I'll move over to this one. Uh, when I started making these, they started taking on the look of almost like a, like a fence to me. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna glue a few more in there kind of quickly. Um, I know I went pretty abstract on the first one, but let's do something a little more kind of representational on this one. And I'm going to use the glass bead 
and maybe stick it right up there. Okay, well, I was kind of going for like, that's a moon in the sky and it's like a fence kind of thing. I don't know if that actually is what it looks like or not, but oh yeah, you see it. Okay, great. Um, but that's kind of what I was going for there. So you can use these to create something a little more um, representational. Uh, let's see what I can do with this bottom, uh, this bottom thing. Let's take uh, use a white one. One circle and smaller circle. Okay, I don't have a plan anymore. I'm just kind of freestyling. I have a bit of a plan. I don't know if it'll work. Oh, thank you very much, K2 Seishi. Welcome. Very happy that you could join us. This is our first time as well. Anyways, I'm trying to make like a tractor. I don't know if it's getting there or not, but that's kind of what I was going for in this one. And if I add a few more little pieces in there, it'll start to start to look like that. Um, a Zamboni. Okay. That's like an ice tractor. Oh, BB-8. Yeah, it does kind of look like BB-8. Um, cool. So uh, that's kind of it for today. Um, I'll sh show you through our things. These are what we, what we made in here today. Um, maybe, maybe I will uh, post these up on our, uh, on our Facebook and our Instagram along with the examples I did before. Maybe I'll paint these after. I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, so what we'd like to do is, is if anyone made something or is going to make something, um, uh, we'd love to see your work. So if you take a photo of it and post it to our Facebook or Instagram and tag AGH and use our hashtag Hashtag AGH at home. Um, and then uh, that way we can see your wonderful, uh, your wonderful creations, um, which is what this is all, all about. So I guess that's it. I wrote, I, I sort of wrote a script up until now, so I don't really know how to, how to finish this off. Thank you very much for joining us, everyone. It's been a real pleasure. I'm so, so happy that, um, you know, the sound and audio worked. Um, and hopefully we'll see you next week. <laughs>